Samuel chapter 22. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord tonight. Appreciate God and his faithfulness, grace, mercies to us. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want to challenge you uh, to look around you. Look around you. Uh, see some folks uh, that are not here. Give them a call. Let them know. Let them know we missed them. Praise the Lord. They expect Brother Snow to do that. And uh, if we get in touch with them and contact with them, let them know they are loved and missed and we need each other. I'm going to preach to you on the church uh, tonight. Just this, uh, um, this day that the Lord has given us, it's a, it is a, uh, a wonderful opportunity to remember that we are a part of a body. We're a part of a, uh, uh, a corporation. We are the living testament of Jesus here on earth. That's what we are to be. We're to be his hands. We're to be his feet. We are to be the body of Christ. And uh, I've had folks get upset about the body. You know what? I get upset at my body. I do. I even look in the mirror and tell it what it needs to do. And Paul said that that I would do, I do not. Sister Snow said last night, we have started more diets backing out of the restaurant than anybody <laughs> she knows of. It's a famous, it's going to happen. I'm telling you, tomorrow, tomorrow, we ain't doing this no more. The body, 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2, 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2, if you found it, say amen. Now go up one verse because we're going to start at verse 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Abdullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house. And I pray that you'd speak to us. I pray that you'd draw us. pray that you'd help us in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. David has been anointed by God. He is the king. Things have not worked out in the topper, in the proper time frame. David doesn't seem to uh, be pressuring God on this situation that I can tell. There was times he didn't understand. He's running from Saul. He knows he's been anointed by the prophet Samuel. I had somebody the other day call me and ask me, do you believe in anointing with oil? I said, we sure do. They said, do you believe? According to the Bible, I said, we sure do. She asked me again. She said, do you believe in anointing with oil according to the Bible? I said, I do. She said, so you will take six quarts of oil and pour it over my head. I said, ma'am, if you'll go buy six quarts of oil, Penn's oil, Quaker State, whatever you want. I'll take it and I'll pour it over your head and I'll pray for you just like I do with olive oil. I said, it doesn't matter to me. She said, I'm talking about that oil that ran down on Aaron's, fell off his beard and onto his, 
onto his breastplate and on his clothes. I said, if you, if you want to get it, I'll pour it over you. I said, I'm more with the New Testament and anointing with oil. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. I said, but if you want to do that Old Testament way, I'll do that. David had been anointed by the prophet. But yet he still hadn't reached the kingdom and he's fleeing for his life. And 400 men come and join King David. King David, while he's fleeing, he goes to Ahimelech. Ahimelech, the priest, says Dave, David was looking for bread. He gives him some, some bread that was beyond the date for the priest. He gives him bread and he says, look, I found something else here, David. Remember what I've told you before about David? No wonder he said, I love to go to the house of the Lord. Because David believed in taking things that God had given him and putting them in the house of the Lord. Yes, he did. Because he turned in Goliath's sword and the man of God had it. David is fleeing. He's running for his life and he brings it out. And he said, here. You brought this to the house of the Lord. Now I'm going to give it to you, David. You take it. And Ahimelech gave the sword of Goliath to David. David is fleeing. He's running for his life. Saul hears about it. A man by the name of Doeg was in there and overheard the situation. Went and told King Saul what had happened. King Saul marches down. He kills Ahimelech the priest. It's amazing what you'll do when you backslide. Oh, you're not ready for me to preach yet. It's amazing what you'll do. He marches down and he slays the man of God and 85 priests. Abathar, his son, was the only one that was able to escape. And he comes to the cave of Adullam there and he finds David in this holding place. It's interesting to note that the cave of Adullam was found in the tribe of Judah. Oh, I don't think that was by accident because there's always refuge. Oh, I said there's always refuge in the one from the tribe of Judah. David came and he found lodging. But what I want to preach to you about tonight, the Lord being our helper, was the men that came to make this mighty army the distressed. Distress means pain or suffering. That is affecting the body or the mind. You, are you hearing me? I don't know if you've ever been around anybody that has been distressed. That's had suffering of the mind. They're being tormented of the mind. Those that was in debt. That means they owed something. They was under obligation. They was fleeing. They was trying to get away from that which they owed. The discontent. That means the disgruntled, the dissatisfied, those complaining, those that was upset about something that had happened, the disgruntled, the dissatisfied, the discontent, those in debt and those in distress, pain or suffering of the body or mind come running to David in the cave of Dulam. Now it seems to me that if I'm running from my life and I'm running from a wicked king that has destroyed Himelech the priest. The last thing I would want is a motley crew of 400 men that are disgruntled in debt and in distress. Now no doubt they showed up and had different ideas. They knew what Saul had done to David and maybe they're thinking we can show up and We'll help him. We'll be Robin Hood. We'll go and start taking back and doing all kinds of plundering and profiting and revengeful things. But that is not what they did. They kept the enemies away. They fought off the Philistines. They fought off the Amalekites. They was a defense for the country. They turned into a success and model citizens under King David. But you can't tell me, and I'm going to talk to you about it in just a moment, that there wasn't times in the middle of this church, right here. Oh, now I know what he's talking about. Well, I wish they wouldn't do that. Well, I wish they didn't act like that. You either fall into one of those categories. 
Ain't nobody come in here perfect. You wouldn't have come to the king if you didn't have a need. You'd have never come to the house of God if you'd have been just floating along and everything would have been fine. But you found yourself in a place where you was discontent. You found yourself, you was in a place where you was in debt. You owed a debt you could not pay. You found yourself where you was disconnected. You was dissatisfied. You was disgruntled. And you came in and said, I'll join up with the army of David, the son of David. I'll join up, I'll find a place of refuge against those things that are coming against us and I'll join up with the people of God. I'm telling you, don't you ever forget. Don't you ever forget where we came from. I said, don't ever forget where we came from. And don't expect, don't expect, I'm going to preach to you here in just a moment, but don't you expect everybody, can you imagine, uh, let's just say 125 of them was disgruntled. Can you get two disgruntled people in the same house and keep them there all day long without something going on? I mean, you ha- you have disgruntled people. I mean, you have you have people that are in debt and and under obligation, and you have people that are under distress and being tormented in their mind. And every time something comes along, they start to think something and go on. Are, are y'all ain't hearing me here tonight? I'm telling you. But if you'll stay with the king. I said, if you'll stay with the king, God's able to turn it all around for you. I said, God's able to make something beautiful out of the church. I, I, Brother Johnson said it this afternoon. I said, I'm, I'm preaching. We was leaving. He was locking up. And I said, he said something. He said, I've never been able to understand the church. And I didn't know what he was going to say when he said that. He said, I've never been able to explain the church. There is something, there's something supernatural about the church. Let me tell you what it is. Because it is God's organization. It's what God instituted and established in the church but in the church is made up of people Woo! I'm telling you what I'm telling you what Sister Snow and I have been married since 1985 yeah that's right since 1985 and we have Never, ever had a knockdown drag out. We have had some moments of intense discussion. We have had some moments where I thought, Lord, she is right again. Come on. Y'all ain't hearing me. One of the hardest things to do is to turn around and go back when you've took a size 13 and opened up wide and inserted it all the way into the back heel. I mean, you didn't stick the big toe in. You crammed your whole foot in your mouth and then you realized you didn't know what you was talking about and your family was right, and they was trying to help you, and God forbid, I worked with an old boy at Turbo Refrigeration. I worked with him for five years, and I finally, in the fifth year before I left, I finally, because I would rake him over the coals. He was over me, and he would tell me, and he'd say different stuff from time to time. I'd say, no, I don't think that's right. And he'd say, yes, yeah, that's right. Go down there and get I said, no, I think I told us to go get this. He said, well, if you don't believe me, then you go down there and ask the supervisor. So I'd go ask the supervisor, and as God is my witness, my hand on the word of God, I wouldn't have been arguing with him if I didn't know that I was right. Not one time in four and a half years did the boy ever say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you was right. You know what, I just, I just felt an unction of the Holy Ghost right now. It'd be, it'd be a good time for us to practice saying that. I'm sorry. Oh, not all of you done that. I'm sorry. You was right. Mama, you did know best. You did, parent, 
Mama, you did know what you was talking about. Say it loud, eh? How good luck. That even goes for adults. I remember times we'd have nights at the round table. We'd sit down for a discussion around the table at the house. And I've sat down and I've looked at my girls and I've said, Dad had a bad attitude. I was overwhelmed. I could give you a bunch of excuses and reasons, but I'm sorry I shouldn't have done that. And pray for me by the help and the grace of God. I won't do that anymore. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, you got to be real. And you got to sit down when you've done wrong, and you got to say, I've done wrong. And all of a sudden, 400 men in debt, discontented, disgruntled, men that can't get along with anybody else, that's fighting, and now all of a sudden they're all in the same cave. Here they are with a man that's running for his life. Come on, somebody help me. I'm telling you, oh, Brother Snow, what in the world are you talking about? I'm telling you, I I mean this, why in the world? There's times, there's times I went in, I told Sister Snow, no, that's not right. You didn't hear, you, I'm telling you, they didn't, they didn't, that's not what, it was, it was, it was not back and forth. Finally. Get out and go ask them. Come back. What did they say? They didn't say anything. No, what did they say? You was right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. You're just saying that. No, I'm serious. I'm sorry. I'll try to remember. I'll try to do better. I'll try. I'm sorry, honey. What did you say? I couldn't. Now, you don't have to run it in the ground. Come on. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. You know why? Y'all ain't hearing me. You know why? Because in 1985, on August the 2nd, Brother Kerry, I made a vow before God that I would this would be my wife until death us do part. I'm telling you what, I was talking to some I was talking to a couple of girls this morning and they said, Hey, they're talking about their wedding and they getting on. Bailey, there's conflict you don't even know of yet. It's called marriage conflict. But you fixing to find out all about it. I'm telling you, there oh, I know you love him and it's a honeymoon, but there's gonna be times, there's gonna be times when you're gonna have disagreement in your family. Now, what you do in the middle of that disagreement, how you respond to that is going to tell whether how long you stay around. Come on. How long you stay? Well, now, I think I've drove the, home, the point home a little bit. How about for the people of God? How about for the people? You know, can I go ahead and tell you, not everybody in here is on the same level. We're not all on the same level spiritually. We're not on the same level in many categories. There's things that we face. You don't know what, a, and all of a sudden we can become disgruntled. We can be, and all of a sudden you get tis, too disgruntled up against each other. I mean, all of a sudden you got all kind. I'm talking about the church, but there's something that happens. There is some kind of component that takes place in the church that doesn't take place anywhere else. I can't explain it. I can't explain what all happened this morning, but I'm telling you when the people of God come in. You can have a banker standing next to a plumber standing next to an architect standing next to a computer geek. You can have all of these guys standing there praying one for another and a just big old hillbilly right in the middle of it. But the power and the presence of God come down and the spirit of the Lord began to move and he'll do something in the church that will not happen in any other place. And we need the church. And the church is needed in the world. We are needed to be the church. So what happens? David's got these 400 men. They can't function. What a crew. Can I be honest? I've been here 20, it's been 25 years. There's times I've said, what a crew. Lord, help me. 
But let's look and see what these guys done. What did they do? In 1 Samuel chapter 30, they go off to fight against the Philistines and they left their family at Ziglag. The Bible said, while there's a way, give me about 10, 12 men up here. Give me about 10, 12 men up here. Hallelujah. Okay, who's in debt? <laughs> yes, I see those hands. Discontented. They all come in and they said, We're going to serve you, King David. And he said, Let's go out here and fight the Philistines. And while they go out to fight the Philistines, Brother Coker, the enemy slips in. And destroys their most prized possession, their women and their children, and take them away and burn Ziglag with fire. And here comes David, and he's leading his men back. And the Bible says, this motley crew, look at them. Look at them. These scallywags. That was nothing. They was nothing before they came under the authority of the Lord, King David. Before you get you before you get to thinking you're all that and a cup of cheese, you need to remember you was nothing before you came in and God reached down his hand and saved you and brought you out. You wouldn't even be here. In your right mind, had it not been for the goodness and the grace of God. And there will be attacks on your life. And in this world that we live in, we're going to face trouble. We're going to have tribulation. Jesus said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And these fellas almost made a costly mistake because they threatened to kill David. They threatened to kill David because they didn't understand. Listen, when you didn't understand, when you don't understand, you don't need to kill Sister Newell. When you don't understand, you don't need to kill Brother Tom. When you don't understand, you don't need to kill your brother or your sister. You don't need to kill the leadership. Praise God. This is good pre I'm talking about the church. Because the Bible said that all of a sudden he called for the ephod. David called and he brought it in and said, Lord, shall I pursue? And God said, go and pursue and you shall without doubt recover all. And so all of a sudden, these men that was once outcast. Well, I'm telling you what, my old man, I'm telling you what, my husband, I tell you, I tell you what, you get him hooked up in the army of God. God can do great things through his life. God will do great things in him that you never dreamed of. Possible. And all of a sudden they took off and began to march. And they marched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They was quick on the draw. That's marching. Hallelujah. Where are we going? We're going. I'm going to take back what the devil stole from us. I said I'm going to take back what the devil stole from us. Some of you in this Sunday night house, it's been so long. It's been so long. I'm telling you what, you don't know how about, you don't know. You don't know how much of a miracle it was. B buddy testified. Buddy, wave at me, brother Buddy. Buddy to testify. I couldn't even hardly get him to talk to me when he first came. Now, now he won't stand and testify. You, I, I, and what all God done and what all God is doing. I've seen the Lord working in his son. Saw Lance here this morning. Come, Y'all coming? All right. I mean, here we go. I'm telling you, I'm headed somewhere. I said I'm headed somewhere. How you doing? Good seeing you. Your grandma, she, she, she's glad you're here. And your grandpa. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm going somewhere. I said I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I said, I'm going somewhere. Joseph is sending, oh, praise God. He's sending, he's sending his brothers back. Stand up here for a minute. Y'all catch your breath. He's standing up. I mean, Joseph is sending them back. He said, go back and tell my daddy. Go back and tell my daddy. But he told them. Why'd Joseph tell them? He said, see 
that you fall not out by the way because he knows how brothers are. Y'all ain't hearing me in this house tonight. I said he knows how brothers are. He knows they'd get to arguing. He knows they'd fall out by the way. They're, they're about to kill David. But David said, let's go and pursue. And the Bible said they began to go. And they went down there and they found an Egyptian that was left half dead. And the Bible says that they brought him, gave him some figs and some grapes. Uh, and they brought him some bread. And he renewed himself. Uh, he came back to life. He led them over the camp while they're down there dancing and shouting and rejoicing. And in come the men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In come these men. They recover all. They recover all. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have, I'm going to have all the men help me here in a little bit. So get ready. If you're man enough. What God do with these men? Stay right there. I'm going to tell you what God did with them. Look on down. Look on down. What happened? Second Samuel chapter two and verse three said there was mighty men. There was a man by the name of Adino. Raise your hand, Adino. Okay, right there he is. Right there he is. Y'all look, wave at Adino right there. The Bible says he picked up a spear and killed 800 at one time. A man who was discontent. A man who was in debt. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me in this house. Where's Dodo? Right there. Here, here, down on the end. There's Dodo. He's down on the end. He's from Eleazar. The Bible said that he fought the Philistines and that Dodo fought the Philistines so long that his hand clave to the sword. That, 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 that's a good picture right there. I'm not, being, I'm not being facetious. That's a good picture of Dodo. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Let his wife go ahead and die. Let his wife go ahead and go before him. He'll just be in service every time. He'll be holding on to the sword. Come on. I said he'll be back here. Brother Snow, can I just open the door on this end? If you'll just let me open the door on Sunday morning. Because I'd rather be a Dodo. I'd rather be in the house of the Lord. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And God would take somebody who was discontent. God would take somebody who was an outcast and make him a mighty man of God. I don't know how many times I've went, I'm about, man, I'm about to preach right now. I don't know how many times I've showed up to the hospital and they said, Brother Baker just left. He just swung by here to just to encourage me. Just swung by here for a minute. Come on now. I'm talking about a mighty man of God. God will raise up men and women and God is desirous of making mighty men. Where Shammah? Shammah, is Shammah in the building? Right there he is. Shammah, the son of a gee. He slew the Philistines when they come to take his lentils. Whoo. You didn't know all that was wrapped up in that man right there, did you? Come on. Oh, man. Oh. I'm not talking about a pea patch. I'm not talking about a cornfield. I'm talking about when the enemy comes to take our children. I'm talking about when the enemy comes to take our brother. I'm talking about when the enemy comes to steal my sister. I'm talking about somebody get anointed enough to stand up under the presence and the anointing of God to stand up and shout the victory and put the enemy to flight. Abishai, where's Abishai? There he is right there. Abishai, hallelujah, he slew 300 at one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd have him flex, but he'd rip the, that's a nice coat, and I don't want him to rip the seams. What was it? Somebody said, man, Samson looked like Tony Atlas. No, no, Samson didn't look like Tony Atlas. You want me to tell you who Samson looked like? Samson looked like 
This young man right here wearing a red shirt. Samson was a little old scrawny boy, but I tell you what it was when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him because he knew it wasn't in his own power. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Come on, Samson. I mean to tell you, friend, it's not in our abilities. It's not in who we are. It's not in what we've done. It's when we get in a place where we allow the presence of the living God to anoint us for the service that he's called us to. It's time we go to war. It's time we put the enemy to flight. It's time God raise up some mighty men. It's time God raise up the church in 2019 like never before. Turn to your neighbor, I'm going to be a mighty warrior for God. Here they are. Beniah. Where's Beniah? Right there. That's you. That's you. I've heard you talk about him. What did he do, Robin? He sure did. He slew 200 lion like Moabites. And he slew a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Come on. Come on, somebody. Y'all looking at me all funny. I'm telling you what, you need to look up here and get you some. Glory to God. Here's some men of God that have faced the lions of hell. Come on now. I mean, they face, they've looked right into the teeth of death. And they've said, oh, death, where is that? sting. Oh grave, where is thy victory? I'm telling you we've come to do business for the master hallelujah, to see folks delivered, to see folks help to see the kingdom of God go forward. God raise up some Benias that'll stand up as mighty men and fight the good fight of faith. I forget which one it was One of them went down and fought a goodly Egyptian. The Bible said he had a spear in his hand and all that he had was a staff. Do you know this is in the Bible? And he went down and took the spear away from the Egyptian and slew him with his own spear. Quit complaining what you don't have. Quit telling me all the excuses of what you would do if your name was. Or if you was related to. What you need to do is make up your mind you are going to serve the Lord and take what you have. Asahel. Where's he at? There he is. Joab's little brother was a mighty man. Uriah, 37 in all. I want you to hear me. Uriah is the last of the mighty men that's mentioned. Uriah the Hittite. Because when David fell in sin, He slew one of his mighty men. What happened was, as he called for Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, Uriah was off in the battle. He called for her, brought her into his chamber. And when she became a child, she sent word to the king. So the king called for Uriah the Hittite to come home and said, go in there, be with your wife. So he would think it was his child. But Uriah was so loyal that he slept on the front porch, wouldn't even go in the house. He said, I'll not go in while my other men
Well, Brother Kirkland asked so-and-so to be an usher, and he didn't ask me. Are you serious? They know I always park there. I said, I won't go in the house. And it wasn't even air conditioned. He said, I'll not go in the house while my other men are sleeping in the field. A mighty man is concerned about his brothers. David trusted him enough. He wrote a letter to Joab and said, Put Uriah up in the heat of the battle and back away from him. Rolled it up, sealed it, and gave it to Uriah. And Uriah was such a man of integrity that he carried his... Some of you can't even go on Facebook without telling 95,614 people. I don't know where that came from, but that was good. All of a sudden, Uriah was such a man of integrity that he carried his own death warrant to Joab. David had trouble with Joab ever since then because Joab had something hanging over him. Y'all ain't hearing me. They backed up. They slew Uriah. David would have been just as good to take his dagger and go out and smite him under the fifth rib himself. Because he was now a murderer. Not just an adulterer, but a murderer. And he wind up destroying one of the mighty men of Israel. I want every man, I want you all to spread out arm's length. I want every man to join us in a circle right here. Every young man, every man. We're going to go down this aisle. We're going to make a complete circle. We're going to go down through there. Okay. All the way around here. We're going to stand right there. Yeah. Right back here, Brother Mickey. Look, look. Come in here. Come on the inside. Come on the inside, boys. Boys, come right down through here. Right there, Brother Perry. Thank you, Brother Perry. Come this way, and we're going to come right around here because we've got to make a complete circle. We gotta make a complete circle. We gotta make a complete circle. Now, if you're outside the circle, I'm gonna ask you to come and get inside the circle. If you're outside the circle, if you are outside the circle, I would like for you to come and find you a seat inside the circle. No, Molly, you can't stand by Jesse. I need some more men down here. This is all right. Come right up here, ladies. Come right up here. Right here. Right here's good. Come right here, Sister Cook. Scoot right down there, Sister Tanya. Take that right down there. Scoot right down there. Yeah. There we go. Sit right in there, Sister Cook. Sit right there, Sister Right. Right on the end. Dylan. Far out, dude. We 
just celebrated. Just celebrated 50 years putting a man on the moon. whoop de doo I'm going beyond the moon. You can stop and get some moon dust on the way if you want to, dude. The Lord lets you. But I'm going beyond. Hey, slide on around this way because we need to make that circle complete. Okay? We don't want any. We don't die in a slip on up here. There you go. Y'all afraid the enemy's going to get in over here? Y'all bunched up three deep. I want you to look at this. Sister Lewis, the first Sunday I was here, I think we had five men. First Father's Day, Brother Robin, I think we I gave out seven gifts to the fathers. Yeah, there's some men. Come here. Come here, Asher. Aiden. Come here. Come, Papa. Papa, come on over here to Papa. Bunches of fun. Hallelujah. You know why it's important that we build a hedge? It's because these right here are dependent on us. Men, these ladies out here was never meant to be the spiritual leader in the home. You've got an obligation as a warrior. Come on. Man up. Put your big boy britches on. Lead the way in the things of God. Lead your way in the house of God. Lead your way in fighting and prayer. Lead your way. Lead the way. Be, be some mighty men that's going to bring deliverance. We've got a generation that's coming. The enemy is having a heyday. Tearing up and destroying churches. And, and we are no exception. There are people that were with us just a few days ago that the enemy is hacked to pieces. And we idly sit by and don't. some of them not even aware. I tell you, it's time that the church house rise up together in unity. Why? For the sake of our children, for the sake of our families, for the sake of those that are going to be coming in. We must fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. And it's time we pray together like we've never prayed before. It's time we seek God like we've never sought him before. Listen, we never know on a Sunday morning when we gather in here. We never know the needs that are represented and prevalent in this house. And if we sit there like a lump on a log, if we sit there half mad and disjointed and disgruntled, the enemy is winning the victory. But if somebody will say I'm going to lift up a hand and I'm going to begin to magnify and I'm going to begin to praise the Lord. God begins to move and when God begins to move in the church things happen in the church that don't happen anywhere else and it's when the people of God join together. Brother, I could never do anything. I could never be anything. You don't know where I'm at. I just read who David took he took those that was in debt those that was disgruntled those that was outcast that nobody else wanted and he made them mighty men and they brought the victory for the people of God God in heaven get over who you were and start letting God make you in to what he wants you to be I need you to stretch your hands men toward this group and I need you to start praying for them right now out loud Father in the name of Jesus for the glory of God I thank you Lord for the body of Christ I thank you Lord I thank you for every lady that is gathered here I thank you Lord for every child that is seated in this place right now
I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we are sick and tired of the enemy destroying. We are sick and tired of the enemy coming against with mind games. We are sick and tired of the enemy destroying the work that you have for the church to do. I pray, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the healing balm of Gilead, Lord, would flood this place. God, that you would lift up the hands that hang low, that you would give strength to the feeble knee, that you would minister and anoint by your grace and your power for your glory. Anoint faith tabernacle assembly of God. Let us arise in faith. Let us arise in favor. Let us arise with an unction from on high to destroy the works of the adversary. I pray for every family represented in this place. Lord, you have made us. You have taken us from where we was and what you are making us into and what we are becoming. It's not because of who we are, but it's because of the work and the plan that you have for us and it's not by might nor by power but it's by your spirit Lord and we are hungering after you we are thirsting after you and our desire is to take back those things that the adversary has stolen now I need you ladies to do something I need you to lift your hands toward heaven and pray for these men. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come on, let, let them hear you pray for them. Hallelujah. Pray you'd strengthen these men. I pray that you'd raise them up, Lord. <laughs> I come against every lie from the pit of hell. I pray right now in the name that is above every name for every husband, for every grandfather. Lord, in this house, I pray for their family. I pray for their children. I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you, Lord, to strengthen. I believe in you to divinely help them, minister to them. I come against every lie of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Make them mighty men of God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 While the children are in, I say the children, while the group is in Africa, years ago when I first went, I became interested in all of Africa. And they have a lot of wildlife. The lion's favorite meat. Lion's favorite meat is a water buffalo. Yeah, you can go to him. Go to him. Go see Daddy. Okay. Yeah, give me that. Give me that hand that just come out of your mouth. There you go. Good. They will. If they can ever isolate them, they'll take a big old bull to the ground. But as long as long as those buffalo stay together, I don't know. You may not be interested in this. You don't have to go check it out. But it's the Battle of Krugerville. It is awesome. They're going to get water. And here comes a whole herd. And a little one goes to take a drink. And a crock grabs him, pulls him in the water. 
he starts bawling. That's not cool. Here comes the lions. They grab him, pull him away from the crocs. But that little old thing starts bawling like a calf. <laughs> and here they come running. I mean, big old huge bulls with horns. Eight or nine lions, and they stand there and try to hold their ground. They run them things all over, and that calf gets up. Shakes off, kicks his hind leg. I thought, man, he was neck deep in crocodiles. Lions drug him away from that, only to be, when he, when he cried out, when he started bawling, all of a sudden, the whole herd. We're not just one. I don't know if you can count or not. We're not just one or two or three here. What would happen if two or three agree touching anything? In the, what would happen if 103? I want you ladies to stand right now. Man, I need you to move up to this side of the altar. I want you to get, we're going to surround them. We're going to get right up here. Come right up here. I'm going to get right out here in the middle. And I want us to pray right now. And I want us to pray. I want you to pray one for another. Sister Lewis, scoot down here, can you? Scoot down here by Sister Newell. I want you to men pray one for another. And I want you ladies to pray one for another. And I want you to make up your mind by the help and the grace of God that none will be lost. We're going to fight one for another. Not with one another, for one another. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the glory of God, I thank you, Lord, that you have called us I thank you, Lord, that you have placed us here for such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, for this mighty army that you've raised up. You've took men from all kinds of backgrounds. You've took ladies, Lord, that have been through all kinds of situations and circumstances. And, Lord, you've brought us together. <laughs> and we're not ignorant of the enemy and his devices. We know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We know that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. And I pray right now for every sister. I pray for every mother. I pray for every grandmother. I pray for every young lady. Right now, devil, you take your hand off of them. I rebuke every spirit of depression. I rebuke every hindering, lying of the enemy that would try to hinder the people God, we are marching forward. We've come to take back that which the adversary has taken away. I proclaim healing in this house. Healing in this house through the precious blood that was shed that still avails. It's never lost its power. Minister in the name of Jesus for the glory of God, for the glory of God, for the glory of God, for the glory of God. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Lift your hands and praise God together. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you brought us into the family of God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm standing here tonight, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise you. I bless your name. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know if you heard it this morning. Brother Edwards, Grandpa Edwards, wave at me, Brother Edwards, over there so they'll know who you are. Big, tall man, light shining on his head. Brother Edwards came to me this morning and thanked me, said how much he enjoyed the service. I knew what he meant. He saw his granddaughter come up out of the water. And she didn't scream because the water was cold. The water was actually hot. It was very warm. She come out of there rejoicing. 
she come out of there rejoicing. Hallelujah. Excited. Sister Snow said, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody so excited to just stand there and want to shout and scream after they got out of the water down onto the down onto dry land, rejoicing where I once was. What God has done for me. You need to remember, I was the crocodiles had you, friend. The enemy was about to tear you apart. Every line of hell was about to destroy you. But God, who's rich in mercy and grace, come by and rescued you and brought you out and brought you back into the family of God. Well, we ought to praise him one more time. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your name that you lifted us out. The pit, the miry clay. Hallelujah. 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 Shake hands one with another and tell them we're going to make it. By the grace of God, you love them and appreciate them. Pray one for another.